It started with the Tri-State Freethinkers, which I co-founded. We heard about the Ark Encounter. As we started to look into it, we found out they were receiving up to $18 million in state, in state money, all while maintaining their discriminatory hiring practices. And it's also anti-science. So when we start looking into each one of these, uh, we got very involved with the art. If you listen to Ken Ham, he chooses his words carefully. What he says is this, we receive no money to build this ark. His money is coming in arrears. With the sales tax, he's going to receive a refund each year of up to $18 million over the next 10 years from the state of Kentucky. In addition, employees and surrounding employees, not just of the ARC, have to pay 2% of their paycheck, which goes to pay back the $65 million junk bond loan that they, they took out from the city. In addition to that, 75% of the real estate tax goes to pay back the junk bonds, not to the county and state. So what's interesting is, when they are talking to certain people, they claim to be a church. At other times, they claim to be a for-profit business. For example, when they're talking with the state of Kentucky for the $18 million, they say, we're a for-profit company. We're eligible for these things. We're not a church. When they didn't want to pay the safety fee that the city of Williamstown was assessing, they said, we are a church. We are exempt from these fees. In order to avoid taxes, they've transferred part of it, which was in an LLC, to a nonprofit for $10 to avoid taxes. But in doing so, they were going to lose their $18 million, so then they transferred it back for another $10 to avoid that. It is a shell game. And the way he set this up is, the entrance gate is a for-profit company, but the actual boat, the ARC itself, is a nonprofit company which can receive donations and discriminatory hiring practices. In any other state, this wouldn't have happened. It was a clear violation of separation church and state. Ken Ham promised this would be a destination where he talked that sometimes two and a half, three million people would come and it would create all these jobs for the locals. They didn't even hit a million people. There are, there are you know, quite a few people coming, but not near the numbers that he promised. Also, most of the locals can't qualify for the jobs there because you have to sign that statement of faith saying the earth is only 6,000 years old. You can't be LGBT, you can't be Catholic, you can't be atheist. They discriminated against so many people they had to bring in outside people for a lot of these positions. The Creche Museum every year had double digit decreases in attendance every year since it opened, until the Ark. The Ark's gonna give it a big boost. But I, you know, Ken Ham said he would have two and a half, three million people. He had less than a million. He's predicting next year he'll double his attendance that he did last year. That's utterly ridiculous. Their target is children. They want to tell children the earth is only 6,000 years old, that God created the earth literally in seven days, and that answers in Genesis is telling people Genesis is true in all formats. And it's scary when you go in there, parents are bringing their children through, telling them these things through the Creation Museum, through the Ark Encounter, that they're, we're, Bill Nye said it best, we're raising a generation of scientific, illiterate children. The biggest thing American atheists, we don't want religious exemptions. We want everybody to be treated equally, all nonprofits or all people. And, and, and Ken Ham and Answers in Genesis is looking for all these religious exemptions and trying to also get benefits as being for profit. They're double dipping it, taking it both ways. And, and that's why, you know, through the Tri-State Freethinkers and American Atheists, we protested the Ark Encounter on their grand opening, you know, and also on their one year anniversary, which we decided to make an annual event. Because what we found is this, while there was many people writing about the Ark before us and, and giving a lot of information, the majority of the pieces were still kind of fluff pieces in the base media. The atheist news was killing it, but the, the general media was fairly positive. Once we labeled this thing and launched the campaign Genocide and Incest Park, it made international news and everybody was talking about it. It got everybody's attention. 
But the neat thing is, as I'm talking to Fox and Friends Live, I wasn't talking about genocide and incest park. I was talking about the state tax incentives, the anti-discrimination, the anti-science. We got all of our talking points. We tracked it after that. The majority of all the stories were negative. Even the Christian papers were reporting what we were doing. But what we noticed is, and we, that was only a one-shot thing we thought initially, but as we got further and further away from that opening day, we started to see the media going back to those fluff pieces of, you know, they're bringing in almost a million people, they're doing these things, and it was more and more media being positive, and we were like, we need to bring this back again. And we need to put it in, on the national stage of getting people's attention. And we were able to do that once again of getting people to talk. And then you had local papers like the Lexington Herald reporting you know, almost on a daily basis of the negative of the arc and all these things start rolling down and we start getting violations from schools. Local school districts start reporting violations of 14 pages of violations we were getting reported all over the county and parts of the state and we were able to get every single one of those removed. And that was because we stood up and said, hey, enough. Here's the misconception. Uh, a lot of people think the Ark Encounter is not making any money. A lot of people think the Ark Encounter is going to go bankrupt. It's vacant. I don't think so. The Ark Encounter, if you do simple math, is probably generated over $30 million in its first year. That's just on ticket sales, not counting merchandise and everything else. And with all the tax deductions they get, all the, the rebates, the tax deductions, they didn't finance this $100 million project with much of their own money. So financially, they're doing fine. They're doing fine, but that doesn't translate to the schools, to the city, the county, state. The city is on the verge of bankruptcy. The county is on the verge of bankruptcy. The Ark Encounter is only helping itself and no one else. But don't we don't we shouldn't lie to ourselves. It's most likely still going to be there for years and years to come. Keep the pressure on on public opinion. You know, we, we let people know that this isn't a family fun day. I mean, think about this. They, they built an entire theme park based on a story of genocide and where God repopulated the earth through incest for the second time. While they have the right to do this, this doesn't sound like a family fun day. Like, who thought this was a good idea? And, you know, we must mock it. We must make fun of it. We also must be informative and educate people what's actually inside these things. We must call people to get out and vote. Originally, it was opposed. We weren't going to give the $18 million in tax incentives. But Kentucky turned out one of its lowest voting ever and a governor came in and said, replace the transportation cabinet overnight and said, no, I'm fine with it, let's run with it. You know, I'm glad we're a Christian state. I'm paraphrasing, but he basically just the other day said, we're glad you're a Christian state where we can be openly Christians, we don't have to hide like sheep. So by putting pressure on them, we need to get out and vote to put politicians that will honor the separation church and state.